Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Kagama. So, as I promised you, um, today is my get ready with me. We're going to talk about a lot of luxury hot topics. Some of you asked me questions, I'm going to respond to them now. Um, this is another Kanga I'm wearing. It's just so that when I do my makeup, like nothing like falls on because I'm wearing a white shirt <laughs> for today's video. Um, I don't know why I decided to wear this t-shirt because it's so hot today, um, so just forgive me for that. So I have to wear this kanga until I'm finished, but I did do my hair off camera, but I will shave it a little bit more because I'm not happy with how it's looking like on here so far, <laughs> so I have to do that a little bit later. So let's start off now with skincare and then I'll do makeup and then everything I'll just I'll just name the products um, in the description below um, because um, this is actually a real get ready with me because Edwin was like, um, when you finish your get ready with me, I'm taking you out to dinner. Um, I was like, okay, woohoo! So this is a real get ready with me. I'm super excited. Um, so I, I, when I'm editing, I won't have the time to write it as captions to every single product. So I'll just put it in the description, okay? All right, so let's get started. So first of all, let's start off with your questions. So thank you to everyone for asking me questions. So the first question that we're going to do is one from YouTube. I'm just pulling it up because I had to um, look for it. By the way, you guys, so much is going on right now in the luxury world. I don't even know how I keep up to date with everything that's going on with luxury because there's just so much um, that is going on. But um, okay, so the first question is, aha, the first question is from Ollie. So thank you, Ollie. And another um, a, a viewer of mine called Emily had a similar question. So Ollie and Emily asked the same question. Um, so I want to say thank you so much to both of you. Um, so Ollie says, there's been a lot of discussion on the death of luxury bags. Interested in your thoughts. Emily says, um, not sure if this is your cup of tea, but perhaps a reaction on HRH collections video called designer uh, oh, on hrh collections video not really responding to them she also mentions another reaction but the topic at hand how luxury bags feel more commodity standing in line for hours to buy is definitely not a luxury experience i feel like you will you will have the best and most articulate point of view on this topic oh my gosh thank you <laughs> now i now I, I feel a little bit pressured because i hope that um I, my point of view um, it doesn't disappoint you. So let me start off with skincare while I um, tell you what I think. Okay, so about the, the death of, um, you know, designer handbags, um, are they dead and all of this. Um, designer handbags are always going to be that cheap. Okay, I think they're dead for a portion of people who don't like the idea that lots of people now can afford to buy bags. I think sometimes in the luxury community, we have this habit of gatekeeping. Um, and I think sometimes like that, that can be very, very uncomfortable. So for example, I did see HRH's, HRH collections page to be completely blunt, if I may. I really I just, you know, it was a struggle to watch the whole video. She uses a lot of profanity um, in her vids. Um, and um, she, you know, yells a lot. I just, you know, her channel's not my cup of tea. If I, and that is me saying it in my Michael Jackson voice. However, I think the points that were being made in her video and a lot of the uh, reaction videos kind of come across like gatekeeping to me a little bit because it's like, well, you say they're done because you don't think it's like a luxury boutique um, experience to buy them anymore. But were they ever really meant to be a luxury boutique experience? You know, when Gabrielle Coco Chanel was alive, um she would you know do fittings for clients like her, her like herself you know as the founder of the house but it wasn't for bags it was for press of ready to wear it was for clothing you know it was for haute couture i think what's happened is luxury bags have become very mainstream and everyone now thinks it's completely acceptable to have a luxury bag which by the way i think is fine um but people don't, I don't know, people don't like feel like it's necessary to have a high jewelry piece in the collection or to have really pricey Van Cleef on Arpel fine jewelry or to have really expensive, you know, Chanel press a porte or like a Chanel um, skirt suit or something. Pe but people do think it's like very cool to have a, you know, affordable like handbag in their collection and then they can wear, you know, any type of clothing that is, you know, also affordable or something. And by affordable, I mean not necessarily affordable like in the, in the contemporary, contemporary sense, but affordable for that person. I don't think designer bags are done 
Um, I think designer bags are always going to be important. There are always new generations of clients coming into designer bags. I think we all need to kind of be really careful about gatekeeping luxury and what luxury should mean. I think some of you misunderstood my intentions with like my big H colors video. Um, and I'm going to link it to the question by um, Ollie and Emily. Um, when we talked about the bright colors and we talked about fur, which is the orange a color from Big H. By the way, it is the only orange in Big H's color palette uh, for 2022, FYI. And I was just repeating what everyone in Facebook group says, everyone in forum says about this color. And a lot of you were telling me, no, I would order it. I don't care what people say. I will buy it. I don't care. I want to see you buy it, honey. <laughs> okay. Go make a wish list for that color. Guess what? The fur Birkins and Kellys don't even really require pre-spend. Like, because they struggle to shift um, those bags, even a constants in that color. It would be hard work um, to, to shift, okay? So it wasn't me gatekeeping or saying like, you can't buy an orange Birkin or Kelly. Of course, you, you should go and do that. It was just me sharing what many people in the luxury community think. I don't think that it's gatekeeping for me to share my, my opinion, but I'm concerned about saying designer bags um, are done and they're no longer special or, or luxurious. Let's be clear. An orange Birkin or Kelly might be a, a sitting duck color, but it's still a Birkin and it's still a Kelly, it's still a Constance, it's still a phenomenally beautiful handmade product that is still desirable because of the fact it is a Birkin or a Kelly or a Constance. I feel like um, I feel like the, the videos um, that I saw about like designer bags being done don't take into effect, don't take into um, consideration that designer bags are no longer just part of the Anglophone Western world. There's so many cultures um, and so many communities worldwide where people are shopping luxury and um, people are buying designer handbags. You know, designer handbags are booming in Asia. You know, they're booming in the Middle East. Are you going to say that they're done just because for you, like it's no longer a special experience? I think a lot of people are misunderstanding that designer bags from a business point of view are actually just meant to support the ready to wear portion for most luxury houses. Okay. Most luxury houses actually prize um, the ready to wear and fashion um, clients more because they know that those are the clients who basically are the lifestyle clients who are going to be coming every single season in and out. I don't think designer bags are done. I think they're always going to be relevant, but I think people's expectations of what luxury is through designer bags has to change. I don't know, in my opinion, I wouldn't be offended if I was buying a bag and I wasn't offered um, champagne. Um, I saw in a lot of the reactions and a lot of comments, a lot of people were saying, you know, like, oh, I wasn't offered champagne and I bought a really expensive handbag. I guess it's a little bit different for us here on this channel. Um, by the way, don't get me wrong, you should be offered water. but. It's a little bit different for us because we study the business strategy so much for these um, for these like brands. So we understand that yeah, if you're coming in to buy like you know a, a canvas Louis Vuitton uh, bag, um, for them that's just another day. But if you go in there like the experience I had, you know, you go in there and say hey, show me your exotics. They're gonna take you to a private place. They're gonna offer you water. They're gonna offer you this. They're gonna offer you that. Um, I don't think it's wrong for um, brands to require clients to spend a certain amount of money before they give a uh, very high-end um, luxury um, service, for example. So no, in my opinion, designer bags aren't done. Designer bags are international. Designer bags are popping in many different countries. Just because in one part of the Western Anglophone world, maybe, oh, everyone has one, it's not special. That does not mean that the brand isn't doing well in different um, par parts of the world. I think it's really important to always remember, luxury is global and luxury is always international. So don't think just because like, oh, you know, here, you know, like where I live, designer bags seem like they're done or they're done. They're not done, honey. They're always going to be relevant. They're always going to be popping. You should ask yourself, why do you want to, uh, I don't know, why, why do you want to kind of keep people out of shopping from designer bags? In my opinion, in the luxury community, there's a lot of gatekeeping. Um, and like I said, I hope me sharing my opinion 
doesn't make me a gatekeeper because I don't want to gatekeep anyone's experience um, of luxury. I'm very uncomfortable with gatekeeping. But I have also noticed that particularly like with Chanel and Big H, there's a lot of gatekeeping and there's this idea that the bag should be worn a certain way or it should be like this or whatever. And that drives me completely barking mad. I have to be honest, it drives me absolutely mad. So I hope I've answered your question. No, designer bags are not done. Um, people need to stop being quite self centered and think that their experience of the luxury of the luxury bag experience is the experience for you know for, for four billion women you know around the world that is just not the case and um that's just basically how i feel about it okay so the next questions um are here on instagram just pulling them up but it did get me thinking like you guys asking me those questions it really got me thinking because Honestly, I was like, why do people think, like, why, and I was like, why is everyone mad at me about the fur orange sitting duck thing? Um, the color is known in the Big Cage community, like, you know, it's a really difficult color for essays and for boutiques to sell. Um, I wasn't trying to, like, be nasty about the color. If you like the color and you want to go request the color, you should go do that, okay? I wasn't saying you should buy it. I was just saying... Um, it is a sitting duck offer, okay? That's all I was saying. But anyway, I hope no one's mad at me about that, okay? I'm not gonna do a color series again and, and call a color a sitting duck color and then you guys are like, oh, I'm gonna buy it, I'm gonna buy it. I feel like some of you were saying you were gonna take it because I said don't take it. Some of you were kind of like that, okay? But don't worry. It's all, it's all love here in my Michael Jackson voice. Okay, the question's from Instagram. Um, the Jackie Turner says, how do you wear luxury items at work? What's work style like in tz Ooh, great question okay so first of all everyone here wears fakes <laughs> i actually uh, went to a meeting um, a few weeks ago and someone was wearing um like a definitely fake like i know it was fake like a fake um, big cage belt <laughs> i'm not laughing at the person i'm not laughing at them at all i'm just laughing at the how many fakes people here wear people wear fakes here like I've seen, I, I think I was at CAF a few weeks ago as well, and I saw someone wearing fake um, Louis Vuitton press porte Like it was not a real um, Louis Vuitton uh, garment. It was absolutely fake for sure. And um, you know, pe people, people wear it, you know, and pe people don't care because I think many people don't know. Um, I don't think it's like people know that they're, that they're actually wearing like fake design a bit so for wearing luxury items at work even if you wore like a chanel or a big h or Louis Vuitton, anything like ready to wear or anything like that people would just think it's um a replica you know people wouldn't think that it was true um what's uh work style like in tz it's very conservative very formal i feel like on this channel um i come across very casual like more casual than i think i would come across normally I think I come across super casual but in my work life I'm very formal like I wear very long skirts that cover my knees for example let's say you have a meeting in a government office in Tanzania um, you really shouldn't go um, to a government office like showing your um, like your elbows a lot you know it depends there's some government offices that are very conservative they'll ask you to leave and go change your clothes um, and you definitely shouldn't wear like tight jeans in a government office or something um, because they will ask you to dress appropriately um, so yeah I would say that people here dress very formally but obviously it's hot so it's all about fabrics here so cotton is your friend linen <laughs> is your friend silk is your friend satin is not your friend honey do not wear satin at a work office in Tanzania people are gonna look at you like you have a coat on your head okay like does this person want to overheat or not but I would say for women, it's very conservative. Um, for men, it's very conservative. Um, it goes without saying, but I might as well just say it now anyway. But like your chest, you know, will be completely covered like this, you know, like no cleavage or anything like that. Like that's not how people roll here. People do not roll like that here. Um, and if you have cleavage, it's going to be awkward for people. Like in meetings, people are going to be staring and the people are going to feel like you've made them feel awkward, if that makes sense. The next question is from RRS49. Um, would you buy a BKC from a personal shopper? Or are you committed to a store buy? This is a great, um, um, yeah, it's a great question. Honestly, I've been thinking about this now for the past like few weeks. Um, I've been thinking about it. 
Um, my feeling about a Burke and Kelly or Constance is I just want to get them from the boutique as a holy grail offer because they're the three holy grail bags from the brand. Um, I would prefer to be offered that in, in store and I feel like I feel like why should I have to go to a personal shopper or a reseller for the, the three holy grail bags? But I'm very open to buying the mini Ruli now um, at um, resale. I actually wouldn't mind buying it at resale, but it has to be like brand new in box and not for the retail price. But with the mini Ruli, again, I feel like th that would be more of me just me being impatient because if I travel, um, I know that it's 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 the, the mini really depending on where you are in the world like in Europe generally speaking if it's there and as long as a client hasn't asked for it they should be able to sell it to you without spend to be honest or maybe just a little bit of spend like maybe some fashion bracelets so I would still say I'm still committed for now okay beyond this summer am I committed because in summer I'm going to try again I don't know when I'm gonna go and I will let you guys know you you'll know when I'm there I won't even say when I'm going but Beyond summer, if I'm not um, successful, um, I feel like if I'm not successful to get a BKC, then I will leave it for like a year and not bother because I feel like you, you have to not get kind of wrapped up in it. I see a BKC as a nice to have, but a BKC is not any nicer than a trendy for me. It's not any nicer than a Dauphine for me. It's not any better than any of Louis Vuitton's exotics. Like I love all, all of those three bags. I love them. So um, for right now, I'm committed to shopping in the boutique, but I can't say I will always feel like this, but definitely for the mini Ruli, I would love to get that in the boutique, but I'm more open-minded. I can't see myself buying a bag in a Kelly or a Constance at resale just because from a business point of view, I can't bring myself to pay more than the retail price. And I'll tell you why. Because I have a YouTube channel, <laughs> I am constantly remembering the prices of these bags like by, by memory now because, you know, I have a YouTube channel, I have a blog, you know, we talk about the prices all the time. So like the Shadow Burke in 25 in Paris is like 8,700 euros, give or take. You know, um, I would not be able to give someone 50,000 euros for the shadow. I just couldn't bring myself to do it when I know it's at FSH for 8,700. So I would just rather wait um, to go. Um, I'd rather wait to just get it in the boutique. And I've told you before, but when the timing is right, when it's God's plan, then I will accept that plan. Um, and sometimes that plan isn't the plan that I think it is. Maybe it's another time. Maybe it'll be sooner. Like, who knows? The next question is from Style with Eve. Opinion on the new Passport Bruma um, article. Yeah, that article's got everyone talking, honey. Like everyone is talking about that article. Yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's really interesting. Um, the things that were said in that article. What I found really interesting. By the way, I just washed my face. <laughs> what I found really interesting about that article basically was this. Um, the the tidbit that I thought was juicy was the bit about the Kellys in her article about how all Kellys being quota bags. Um, the purse pop is she she gears most of her content towards like the US um, and Canadian audiences, but I thought that was a really juicy scoop because that is something that I have been thinking they have to be working on that, and I think that they have been working on that now for some time because like even the Kelly to go um, and the Constance to go like those have kind of taken on a life of their own like in forums and groups they're really 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 hard to get they're not um like as easy as to get uh, as they they were like a few like years ago you could just walk into the boutique and just see them there they do require like a little pre-spend in certain markets um i thought the idea of every kelly bag um being a quota bag absolutely fascinating and some of you had like fought me on this before about like the kelly pochette like the the status of the kelly pochette in the us um i'm sorry but i do think that the kelly pochette eventually will be a quota bag in america if it's not already um some of you are like oh it's not a quota bag i still feel like the kelly pochette though can you still get three bags a year or two bags a year including the kelly pochette and you don't spend 100k a year hmm, i don't know about that you know, I think that she's right about all Kelly bags um, becoming quota bags in some shape or form. And I think that actually makes sense for the brand, um, for them. So that would mean the Kelly Pochette, the Kelly Ado, obviously the, the mini Kelly, that goes without saying. If you think about it, it's kind of like all bags that have a strap with the Kelly hardware are basically a quota bag. We're going to include the Kelly Cut um, as well, you know, because even though the Kelly Cut, I feel like 
isn't like I don't know I feel like it's not desirable people don't really want to buy it the way they used to it's still um, one of the Kelly bags so that um, honestly that was the part to me that I found really interesting if you think about it all Kelly bags um, being quota bags is much more powerful um, to be honest with you than just focusing on the quota because all of a sudden what that will do is that will really increase the value of bags like the Kelly dance like I've, to my knowledge in the US and Canada I think the, Ke the Kelly dance is a quota bag in Canada and the, Ke the Kelly pochette is a quota bag in Canada but in the US I think the Kelly dance it depends which market you're in like in a competitive market the Kelly dance will be a quota bag but in a non-competitive one it won't whereas definitely um, you know in a lot of European markets the Kelly dance is a quota bag right so I think it kind of makes sense for them to do that so that was actually the bit that I uh, thought was um, the most interesting um, part of her article I still feel like the Constance though is the, the bag to watch this year because I feel like they have plans for that bag because that bag is not even being offered in Paris right now that that should s signal alarm bells to those of you who follow Big H and you watch Big H and you, you keep up to date with Big H and her shenanigans the fact that the Constance the Constance always used to be seen particularly in Paris as like a consolation offer um, I haven't heard of people being offered the Constance this year like that. Not even like that. Like people are being offered um, non-quota bags that, that are not that desirable and that no one really wants to buy. People aren't really being offered the Constance like that. So I think that's also a signal of, you know, the things that um, we can expect um, to come um, for, for, like, for the brand. Because the Constance, honey, like she's looking at everyone like, guess what? My name's Beyonce. Okay, you can't just access me like that <laughs> you can't just get me you know like that which I think is you know a really interesting um, thing as well so I want to thank everyone for asking me questions it was really interesting just like answering your questions because it really got me thinking about like so many things I want to quickly tell you what I think is going on in Paris at the moment so um, as most of you know I was there in January um, the situation sounds like it's deteriorated since then it was pretty brutal like for me <laughs> okay it wasn't um, a good time for me but the situation doesn't um, sound good um, in Paris right now I think that there are lots of changes happening to the appointment system um, I've spoken to tons of you I think I've spoken to at least I was counting the other day from January up until today um, I think I've spoken to about 15 of you who've all reached out to me privately who've been um, to Paris and I was actually doing a count of how many of you scored and very few of you scored um, very few of you scored I think that Paris is changing not just from a hybrid system where um, a, a portion of people get bags and then other people have to spend I think we're heading into a fully blown situation where Paris wants to attract an international jet set clientele who shop maybe <clears throat> two or three times a year and buy lots and lots and lots of bait um, at the Parisian uh, boutiques. So I had this one theory about the situation in Paris as well, which is a lot of VIPs who shop um, in Paris, a lot of them um, are resellers, some, not all, <laughs> some. And I think that they are familiar with that. And I think one of the reasons why they use like a uh, big age, one of the reasons why they have like these, you know, people who like welcome VIPs, I do actually think that they have an like another reason for that team as well. I don't think it's just for VIPs and making VIPs feel special. I think it's also to understand who of their VIPs are reselling and how can they kind of sort that out. I've said it before that I feel like um, Big, Big H's uh, like approach to reselling, I think that they are not as proactive as Big C. I feel like Big C are so proactive and they're fighting the, the reseller situation there uh, quite hard. But in my opinion, the situation in Paris is such that there, there are too many people shopping um, at the brand. So they don't really have to cater to people who are trying to score one time and to go away. And I actually think they're making the, the game so difficult there now because they want to discourage people who go there once a year and then don't come back. They want those international jet setting 
shoppers who come two to three times a year um, and who drop a lot of money um, eat in each visit. That is where I think the Parisian uh, situation is headed. Um, don't get me wrong, like, you know, flying to Paris two to three times a year, that is a, a blessing in itself. But, you know, a lot of us <laughs> have to work. I work. I have to work very, very, very hard um, in order to even justify going on those trips, not because of the financial element, but really the time off work. That is where I think the, the Parisian situation is going. I also think that pre-spend in Paris is way more important than blogs group and Facebook groups say. I actually have a conspiracy theory about a lot of social media concerning a big age, which is that a lot of people on social media um, like to further this idea that everyone can have a unicorn experience um, in Paris. Um, in my opinion, that is just not correct. And most of you who are members of my Facebook group, by the way, please go join the Facebook group, um, know um, how I feel about that because I just don't think it's accurate and I don't think it's true. I think that some people f want to kind of further this idea that it is a unicorn, um, ex like it's a unicorn kind of situation so that they can feel like they have clout or something. But the reality on the ground, once you've been to all three Parisian stores, you quickly realize that everyone is spending money um, in the three Parisian boutiques. So you're going up against people who are, are, are literally going to Big H and are going to buy furniture. Okay, you better you better believe if someone goes into Big H um, and to buy furniture, that person's going to walk out with the bag. <laughs> you better believe that. So I think all I'm saying is please just be aware that the situation in Paris um, absolutely requires a degree of pre-spend. I don't think that there is a exact. Um, I have my very detailed theories on what the number is, like what what the pre-spend number is and i think i i think i have a good idea of what it is but i don't want to say it yet until i've been there and then put it and put it to the test because when i go this time around i'm not really going to waste time because i will not be able to put edwin through the sort of shenanigans all over again um so when i go like this time around like um in summer i will just um like do what I, do do the pre-spend that i think is necessary I know there are going to be some of you saying, well, my friend went in 2020. Okay, cool. Guess guess what? <laughs> we don't care. Because do you know what? Let me stop you right there, okay? 2022 is not the same as 2020. 2020, um, the luxury like industry, like people thought the luxury industry was going to collapse. Big H were giving out tons of bags left, right, and center, not just in Paris. They were releasing bags like no one's business. But now, you know, the, the door has closed. Um, does anyone remember that scene in The Mummy, the 1999 film with Brendan Fraser and Rachel Weiss, um, where Benny is stuck in the one, one of the pyramids and the, the gold, like the golden gates are closing or the doors are closing and he's stuck in there? The doors have closed, honey. It's business as usual. Um, don't let anyone tell you that pre-spend um, in Paris doesn't matter. It absolutely matters. Now, let's talk about who pre-spend doesn't matter for. Pre-spend doesn't necessarily matter for um, influencers. I do feel like influencers have a different experience. But generally speaking, I think that there is significant pre-spend that is required to score in Paris. I don't think I did enough pre-spend last time. I have a theory of what I think the pre-spend is. But like I said, you know, go join my Facebook group. Um, my Facebook group is a little bit more uncensored. I feel more comfortable saying those things because I don't want to annoy anyone from Big H who may accidentally be watching or something. Um, but yeah, look, every, everyone is spending money. I just want us to be very clear about that. Please don't fight me in the comments. I was just there in January, okay? Every single person is spending money in there. Um, and then for the people who have like a unicorn experience um, through the appointment system, they got lucky, that's it. But a lot of people, even with the appointment uh, system, are scoring um, because they uh, did, did pre-spend. One really interesting um, question that I asked people who were, uh, who were members of my Facebook group um, below is I said, like, do you ever get tired like, of the games? I have to say, I feel like I am kind of um, starting to lose like my patience for the luxury games. Like how, how much time can we all kind of dedicate to scoring bags and like, oh God, trying to score this bag and trying, not, not just for Big H, like for all of them, Louis Vuitton as well, Big C as well. Like how much time can all of us kind of 
um, dedicate to this. Like, I, I don't know. I feel like the other day I was um, looking at uh, cars because uh, I'd like to add a car this year. Um, and I was, I was just like looking at some listings um, and it was a Range Rover. No, no games required. You know, my money <laughs> will be welcomed there. They will happily take my money and they won't like treat me like a beggar. And that is something that I said um, in the group. I was like, you know, I don't want to be treated like a beggar. And I feel like particularly Big H, Big H makes you feel <laughs> like you're a beggar, okay? And they make you feel like you have to beg them um, for their, their product. I always thought that maybe this year I would get a Big H exotic. Um, honestly, my my heart now I think is with getting a Louis Vuitton exotic. Um, I don't think I'm going to be getting a, an exotic from Big H this year. Um, you never know what could happen when I'm in Paris, but I actually don't really like the way um, I'm actually starting to um, lose interest in the way Big H like is is running their 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 business basically because I was on the website. I was looking at homewares that I like, which I'd happily order through a personal shopper. But then I'm like, oh my god, all of this work just to um, all of this work just to like score a bag, and even then, it's a very expensive bag, and you're still treated like a beggar. And the the big HSA in Paris has to think that you're worthy. <laughs> I'd rather take that money and go to Louis Vuitton, <laughs> okay, and get a beautiful exotic, be offered champagne, be given the red carpet treatment, and get uh, one of my liking, you know. So, um. I think for me right now, I still am interested in luxury, I love luxury, I'm always going to like it, but there is a little bit of fatigue. Um, that's why I said, you know, with the designer bags are done thing, bags to me are not the be all and end all for luxury, but I can see why for a lot of people, this it's starting to just become a huge massive turn off for um, a lot of people, and a lot of people feel like they don't want to dedicate any more time to it. But that said, I don't like contemporary brands. In the um, in the uh, discussion, like for the whole art designer bags, like dead thing, a lot of people were saying they shop from contemporary brands right now. To be honest with you, I'm a uh, yin, yin or yang type of person, meaning I like fast fashion brands like Zara, ASOS and H&M. I love them. I'm always watching Zara haul videos, ASOS haul vids. Um, I I'm always like looking for codes and stuff for that for that for that stuff or I love really really high-end stuff so I love exotics I love fur I love you know high jewelry I love fine jewelry I love you know Cartier Versace Big H Big C or I love Zara like I'm not someone who would shop at a contemporary house I hope you're not offended if you like contemporary brands um, I don't really care for them and that's only because um, I don't know I just not I'm just not interested so I think I think that for me, I'm getting a little bit of luxury fashion fatigue, um, and that fatigue um, for me is um, setting in a little bit, and that's why I was telling you guys that I want to also cover like um, I also want to make sure that I'm covering like like. Uh, travel and luxury cars and things like that because there's actually a lot of really exciting things going on the high high end travel is really cool I think I've I think I mentioned it in the group but um, I should tell you I should tell you guys as well here but um, I've always wanted to um, like fly fly private I've always wanted to do that as well so that's something I'd love to do um, and that is like high end travel um, so I think basically you, you kind of get what I'm trying to say. Um, I hope I'm not rambling too much, but luxury uh, fashion, luxury shopping in terms of fashion, um, to me, it's getting a little bit, it's getting a bit tiring, um, a little bit. And it has nothing to do with this channel. Um, that's why I was always saying that I want this channel to be about luxury, generally speaking. I wouldn't be able to do a channel that's just about luxury bags or whatever, because I, I, I feel like I would get really bored. Um, if my channel was just about that, I have a lot of different uh, luxury interests and I want to uh, focus mainly um, on those. So I hope that that has made sense and not sounded like a, a rambling mess. But yeah, there's a little bit of fatigue, a little bit. Um, and by a little bit, does that mean that I'm going to stop posting? No way. <laughs> I love posting on this page. Am I going to stop start posting about other things? No, I love luxury and I'm always going to post about it. 
but I am getting a bit tired of the planning, the games, the shenanigans, constantly having to like organize things. I've noticed that a lot of that though is mainly um, from Big H and Big C um, and Louis Vuitton as well to a lesser extent because I do think that Louis Vuitton um, are also kind of like getting their, you know, their feet wet in creating these games um, for clients and things like that, which honestly, I really, 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 really don't like, but you know, hey, hey, here we are. So I just wanted to, you know, share my opinions about that. Um, I'd love to know um, what you guys think as well about that. I'm very curious if you guys are also thinking and feeling the same way as me. I feel like all of us, we all kind of need to sometimes just like take a break as well and make sure that we have a ton of other hobbies and we also like a lot of other brands and not just like the same old brands i like a lot of brands one thing i think i find really uncomfortable about the uh, big h uh, community and this is more about big h it's not really about chanel or louis vuitton i think a lot of people um who shop uh, from big h kind of um go all in on big h so they only want to shop from Big H or they only want to buy bags from Big H. I don't want to do that because I feel like, I feel like for me, that would actually play with my head if I only liked Big H. That's why on this channel, I'm always going to cover um, a lot of brands. You're always going to see Louis Vuitton on here. You're always going to see Chanel. I want to make more of an effort to post more about my actual favorite brand, which is Cartier. Cartier is actually my favorite house. So I want to make sure that um, I post about um, them as well. So. I hope this hasn't been a long rambling mess. There are a few other things I wanted us to talk about while I fix my hair and then I'll be done. Um, but yeah, a few other things that I wanted to talk about is I'd love to know what kind of videos you'd like to see from me, um, luxury related. Some of you are telling me not to see Tanzanian vlogs and things. Um, it's not that I'm, I don't want to film them, but um, I'd like to keep the theme of this channel the same. I think I've said before, but I don't watch like, um, I don't watch uh, people's like life life vlogs. Like I find it really hard. Like I found this channel the other day and I was really enjoying the videos. And they were like luxury videos. And then the person starts doing like life vlogs and stuff. And I'm like, no, stop doing that. <laughs> okay, I don't want to watch those videos. So I'll be very curious to know like what other luxury videos um, you like to see from me. I do have, um, like I said, my bait series, which is coming. Um, by the way, in the group, we posted, well, we, like, I was posting on behalf of members. I asked, like, group members, like, send me what, what I'm calling the bait list. <laughs> so, like, how much, um, like, stuff that you bought from Big H in order to um, be offered a Burke and a Kelly or a Constance. Um, that was really cool. So, I was, like, posting those in the group for the past few days. They're all anonymous because people don't want to post them under their real name. I totally understand. Um, so people would send them to me and then I would repost them in the Facebook group um, on behalf of other members and be like, hey guys, someone here got offered, you know, a mini Kelly or got offered, you know, a Birkin 30. That was so eye-opening. I learned so much about bait <laughs> from posting those lists. So what I would love to do, if one of you is comfortable, um, for my actual, like, bait um, series, which is going to come in April, um, I would love to feature a bait list, because not a wait list, a bait list. <laughs> I would love to feature a bait list um, in one of my bait like series videos. It's going to be a three part series, maybe four, because there's so much to cover. So if you're comfortable with me talking about what you spent um, and you want to do it anonymously, reach out to me on Instagram um, or send me an email with all of the bait um, that you bought, the, what you were offered, the year you got the offer and your spending ratio and how competitive your boutique is. And ideally, if you're really comfortable to say where the boutique is so that I can at least say in the video, like it's in North America, like I would prefer to do that. So like if you were offered and let's say you live in New York, I won't say you were offered in New York. I'll say somewhere in the US or something like that. I would love to do that. If the group members are watching, please, Give me your permission. Um, um, uh, give me your permission. Does that sound right? I would love your permission to repost one of the bait lists, um, but only with permission, obviously, in the actual bait video. I learned so much from those lists. I was just like, oh my gosh. Okay, so just before we talk about some other stuff, um, what do we think about Chanel's costume jewelry? Because my birthday's coming soon, and I can't stop looking at their costume jewelry. 
Um, but it, am I wasting money? Should I just get something from Cartier or should I get a Chanel costume jewelry piece? Cartier goes without saying, it's my favorite brand. I love everything they do. So you, you don't even need to be like, it depends what you like from Cartier. I love, I love everything there. <laughs> okay. But I love the 22 best costume jewelry from Big C. So please solve this dilemma. Drop a comment below and tell me, should I buy Chanel or Cartier? So just before I wrap up here, um, I just wanted to, yeah, just thank everyone for supporting this channel. You can see we're almost at 4,000 subscribers. I mean, my God, I just never thought that anyone would watch my vids. I'd love to know what videos you want to see from me moving forward. So I think I said this summer I'm going to go traveling um, again. We're going to go to this other location, but I'm not going to say what it is until we arrive because I don't know when we're going. And I know some of you will be like, when are you coming, when are you coming, when are you coming? I don't know when um, for this other location. Um, so I'll have lots of great content for that um, and also like as I've said I'm going to try again in Paris um, as well this summer so I'll have great um, Parisian videos that will be coming. If you liked my Parisian videos in January you're going to love the ones in summer because the weather will be fire um, and yeah I'd just I would love to know what, what other kinds of vids you'd like. I also would like to go to Johannesburg, South Africa soon. I haven't been back in like two years and of course there's a Louis Vuitton there, there's a Gucci there, there's Bulgari, there's Versace there's Cartier, there are Rolex 80s there so you know Johannesburg is like it feels like my second home I love that city so much it's one of my like top top five cities of the world um, so I think I'll definitely have like a South African vlogs as well in summertime so I have a bunch of travel like planned for summer and of course closer to home I would love to go to Zanzibar for like a weekend break I was telling Edwin about it I just need a break by the way when I say go to Zanzibar, it makes it sound like it's so far away. It's a 10 minute flight, <laughs> okay? It's a 10 minute flight. <laughs> you know, you just jump on the plane. So hopefully if I go there, if I go there, I'll film, I'll film a Zanzibar vlog for you guys. Um, if you're interested, let me know. But yeah, so hopefully I'll do that as well. So I have so much travel planned. I have so many fun sit down videos. Do you like videos as a series? Because I feel like the colors, the Big H colors video series, that did well. I got great feedback. I got a lot of feedback from a lot of you privately who told me that you really liked that video. I was really impressed with that because I was like, whoa, like I was impressed that you guys liked it so much. So that gave me the strength. You're going to love the bait series. I have taken this one so seriously. I'm like, I have a master's in journalism. I'm approaching it with a more journalistic viewpoint, honey, because I don't want anyone being like, it's all about the relationship. Can you please stop? In fact, say it with me. Let me stop you right there, okay? Because we all know the relationship is the least thing that has to do with it. And in fact, I don't want people saying, don't say the R word here, okay? The only relationship I have is with Edward, the man I married in 2019. Don't tell me to start up a relationship with an essay, okay? Because that is not something that I'm interested in. I would love to know what you guys are buying at the moment and what is everyone obsessed with. Honestly, right now, I've really been looking at um, a lot of things at Balenciaga and Bottega. I was looking at some new Cherry Lazarus sunglasses. My attention is really focused there. Um, I think you guys have noticed I've kind of taken a bit of a break from Big H, like posting vids at the moment. I've mentioned Big H a lot in this in this Get Ready With Me, but I haven't posted a Big H themed video, I think, in the, in the past two weeks. Um, I like doing that. I like taking breaks from the brand, but actually, I would I have seen some homewares that I liked um, that I saw on the website so um, I'm going to reach out to a personal shopper and order those so I'm really excited about those because those ones are definitely going to get ordered um, and it's something which has just popped up on the site again because normally they take things down and then they put them back up again anyway you guys I really hope you've enjoyed today's get ready with me I hope it hasn't been too long I'd love just to get your feedback on my channel where you think my channel can go, what ideas you have for my channel that are luxury themed, if you think I should cover anything. I kind of like the idea of you guys asking me questions and things to react to. I think that's really interesting. I'd love to explore that more. So if you have things you think I should react to, we can maybe do that. Maybe like once a month or something, like you give me a bunch of things like react to this and I do. And yes, don't worry. On Saturday, I have a dragon video, okay, and it's going to be very epic. I don't, I don't know what's going on with these brands, honey, okay, but they get people angry and they get people heated. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on Saturday in my next video.